You're a big girl now, Winnie. No, you don't get to be with your mama as much anymore. I'm sorry. So we've done a new thing. We have separated the babies completely from their moms. And we do this because when the moms start to naturally wean them, their milk will go down. And we wanna keep that milk up through the rest of this year. So we switched up how we're doing everything here. We've got Willow and Tilly in the goat area. And then we've got the two babies out here with Luna, Doris, and Fern. Now, Luna is the perfect nanny for the two little babies. It's so adorable. She's so sweet to them. But Doris is a little too mean for the little babies to wanna be by, and Fern is just concerned with eating food while she's pregnant. So it works well to actually have Penny and Willow and Tilly all together because this way the mamas are separated from their babies and since they're all at the bottom of the herd order, they all can share their food. We've actually switched all of the goats over to the same diet that we had Penny, Willow, and Winnie on, which is a low calcium diet that doesn't really include a lot of alfalfa. I've definitely seen improvement in Penny and Willow's legs, so I'm thinking that this might be a good overall diet for the herd. It'll be much easier if everybody's on the same one. So far, they're all doing great on it, and everybody is healthy and happy. And hopefully we'll see a full reversal of the hyperextended legs in Penny and Willow. So for now, this is our current little setup, and it's adorable to watch Luna try to take care of these two little babies since she isn't having any more of her own. The most fun part of farming is to see the little relationships develop between your animals, and I definitely think that Luna is going to be besties with Tatum and Winnie. Okay guys, we are going to pick up a brand new member of our family. We are so excited. Yeah. So, I'm gonna take you along with us and let's see if you can guess what it is. Let's go. Be careful with it. Is it good? She's so sweet. Is she sweet? She Aw. Heavy. So cute. Isn't she the cutest thing you've ever seen? New member of our family. Let's open it up and see what we have. Oh, <gasps> honey. honey. That's some good honey. It's gonna last us another two years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yum, that's pretty good. So sweet, <laughs> well, Welcome to the family, honey bucket. <laughs> so we like to buy our honey in bulk and local and raw and unfiltered. That way we get a lot of the pollen in it and it's really good for seasonal allergies. Our first one two years ago was clover and this one is mesquite. So we're excited to um, have a little bit of different flavor. After two and a half years, you get a little bit tired of it. I get a lot of questions about the price of a size of a honey bucket like this, and it cost us $200 for the whole thing. That's five gallons of honey. That lasts us a really long time. So when you buy it in bigger amounts, it's going to be a lot more economical, which is what Kevin likes, right Kevin? Yes. She's a welcome addition. And the cool thing about honey is that it never expires. So that's why we're comfortable eating it after two years. So we'll see how long this one lasts. Well guys, if it feels to you like Stella's been in the buck pen forever, that's because she has been in the buck pen forever. Because we've had goats not get pregnant in the past, we like to leave them in a full month to make sure they're pregnant. Stella's been a tricky one, so it's anyone's guess as to if she's actually been bred. The good news is, this weekend we're getting her ultrasounded, and we'll finally know if Goofy Stella is pregnant. Wish her luck, she's gonna need it.
Well guys, the garden is looking pretty dreary. So today we're gonna pick the last little bits so that we can save it before it dies in the heat. We've got watermelon to pick. A bunch of cantaloupe, some of it has gone rotten with our high temperatures. So we've gotta throw it out to Hermione. But we've got a bunch of squash and a little bit of tomatoes left. Well, I can't complain about everything. There's still some stuff that is going strong in the garden. The pumpkins are doing well. The asparagus looks kind of weird, but it's doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing. The sweet potatoes are in full force. And I've got fun things like Malabar spinach, Asian long beans, and some Armenian cucumbers. But even though living in Arizona means that the summers are horribly hot, I'm already starting to plan for the next round of planting for my fall garden. So here's what I've got planned. In my first row, it's mostly perennials. I've got a tangerine cross vine, some artichokes, and a little bit of basil. But I plan to add a couple more perennials and just kind of make this my perennial row. The second row used to have some dying zucchini in it, but now I'm going to put tomatoes. I can grow a second round of them here in the fall if I use some of the short varieties. In the third row, I've already got some corn planted. And then in the fourth row, I decided to grow a bunch of red peppers because I want to preserve them this year in some all olive oil and use it for different kinds of pastas throughout the winter. On this trellis we built about a month ago, I'm going to grow some more squash and some cantaloupe. And then on these two trellises on the end of row three and four, I'm going to try to grow some pole beans. On my fifth row, right next to the pond, I'm going to go for it and try some tomatillos. So we'll see how that works. I've never grown them before, but I'm so jealous of my friends that do. So I don't know, wish me luck. In the sixth row, I'm gonna prep it for carrots, although I can't really start them for another month. And then in the seventh, eighth, and ninth rows, it's a little bit tricky because some stuff is already growing and some stuff needs to be pulled out. Like I said before, I've got sweet potatoes going, some asparagus, pumpkin, and then the Malabar spinach, some cantaloupe, the Asian long beans, and some Armenian cucumbers. There's a lot of space throughout these rows, and that's where I'm gonna put some shallots, some carrots, some beets, some greens. So it might look a little bit empty for now, but as we start rolling here in September, things are gonna fill out nicely throughout the fall and then the winter. Once September hits, I'll also be needing to plant broccoli and cauliflower and cabbage, but I'm not gonna really plan for that yet. I'll just fit those in in all the spaces where stuff doesn't grow. <laughs> I'm sure I'll have little places to plant these guys. And finally, in the old corn patch, I'm not really sure what to do. It's not really soil that's been nurtured and it probably isn't super healthy. So I don't know if I should try to fertilize it a little bit and grow some wheat or if I should go ahead and turn this whole thing into some rows of garden space too. That would take quite a few loads of dirt, killing the grass, a lot of different things to think about when trying to expand the garden that way. But so far, I think this plan is good. And for those of you that live in the Southwest, I hope this gives you kind of a glimpse into what I'm planning for our second round of planting in the, in the summer, fall, and as we move towards the winter. We don't grow all of our food on our acre lot, but we grow quite a bit. And just for today, this is a pretty good haul. A bunch of cantaloupe, watermelon, butternut squash, and tomatoes, which is the perfect treat in this hot summer. What? Okay, call, call her. Okay. <laughs> big, 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 big. Here she comes. Here comes the chickens too. Okay, toss it, toss it now. Ooh. Yum. A melon just for you.
whole lot of crap, goat crap in your barn, you need another pooper crapper invention. Let's try it out. Okay, folks, Kevin has a good plan. We got lots of poop, Lydia, so not one strainer. You gotta have a scooper pooper <laughs> and a strainer. This is actually a pretty cool craft. Yeah, I'm I mean, you welded it all together. That's pretty cool. That's pretty fancy. Pretty cool. Okay, right. let's see if it works. Let's see. <laughs> That's amazing. Wow. amazing. Look. The crap in the corner scrapper. Crapper scrapper. <laughs> I think we may need help on a name for it. I think so. I saw a recipe for baked chicken tacos, but I realized at the last minute I didn't have any corn tortillas. But I did have two sweet potatoes. So I baked them up and I'm gonna try my hand today at sweet potato tortillas. It's such a simple recipe, I'm surprised I haven't made this earlier. Basically you mix one part sweet potato to one part flour, although I ended up using a little bit more. It was about a cup of sweet potato and about mm, one and a half cups of flour. And then you just work on it until you get it into a nice soft dough. Oh, also don't forget the salt. You need probably about a half a teaspoon in this. I divided my dough into six pieces, but ended up dividing them in half even further. So this made 12 taco-sized tortillas. If your surface is floured, it's pretty easy to roll these out with just a rolling pin. And then I broke out my pancake griddle, which made it a lot easier to cook these. I just cooked them for about a minute on each side, just enough to brown them up, but not make them crispy. And I kept going until I had 12 tortillas. To make the baked chicken tacos, I cooked the chicken with a can of green chilies, a little bit of cumin, and salt. So it was very simple. And then I laid them on half of the tortilla, added some cheese, and folded them over. Because these are fresh and flour-based, they aren't really going to crisp up in the oven. So the purpose of baking them is really just to melt the cheese, which could be done on a skillet as well, but I figured if I baked them, it would be a lot faster. I sprayed the tacos with just a little bit of olive oil and they came out perfectly. They were super soft, cheesy. It was like a chicken verde, cheesy, sweet potato. I mean, I know it sounds crazy, but it tasted amazing. So we're definitely going to save this recipe and use it in the future, especially when I have all of my sweet potatoes ready from the garden come November. These tacos went perfectly with our fresh watermelon from the garden. It was such a great light summer dish and we're going to be eating this watermelon <laughs> for days. This is Karen. Karen is a liege fighter chicken, and she adopted three little silky chicks. Why is her name Karen, do you ask? Well, you'll see in a few minutes. I don't know, she's kind of a mean mom. She's kind of strange. She always yeah. gets after them. She doesn't let them go anywhere. <laughs> this is the only way we can pet them. <laughs> We're like, there, there. Oh, be nice. She's not mean to them. She's, she's just kind of like, yeah, she does stay by them and protect them, but she's also kind of like, the helicopter mom. <laughs> she kind of doesn't realize that she's a lot bigger than them. Uh huh. Oh, watch out. It turns out fighter chickens make really good moms, very protective. Everybody's oh, wanting to get fed. <laughs> they all congregate over here one by one, especially that one. Oh. I have to bring my kitty with me. <laughs> yep. All the goats are gonna eat Hermione's dinner. <laughs> yeah, right. She's too strong. Watch this. Oh. I think she's gonna let them eat. Oh. She's gonna bite. Watch out, Winnie! <laughs> Winnie! Look at all the gross stuff they got on Tatum's head. Oh, she, she bit her hairs. There we go, Doris. Come on. Go ahead and get started. No. 
Okay, you see me. <laughs> She's trying to learn she not to jump. That. She still jumps right here. It hurts. No. You don't have to milk animals on the floor anymore. Yay. <laughs> So we're doing the evening chores together as a family because it's nice outside and there's no buzzing in the trees from the cicadas. So we're gonna help Ethan tonight and get his chores done fast. Start like a normal routine, Doris and then Tilly and Willow. Cause you glue all the pieces back together. Yeah, you, you take all my wrongs and make them better. What do you say? Yeah, you, you're making me wanna try forever. Kevin, I'm afraid Tatum still gets in the feeder. It's like a it's like a schedule for her now. She just comes, runs over here when she gets let out in the morning and jumps in. She's, she's got a friend. It's a two-person hammock. Yeah, she's taught Winnie how to do it. How you doing, Fern? You like hanging out with the babies? And the old lady? Watch, here comes Tilly, and there's her baby Tatum. Let's see if Tilly feeds her. Oh, Tatum. Tatum! No, oh, she doesn't really care about her baby anymore. <laughs> That's okay, you were a good mama for a while. Tatum tried to get a sneak of a uh, drink in there, and <laughs> Tilly's trying to run from her. <laughs> <laughs> they are so happy. Oh, hello, Zoro. Hi. That's it's time for beard, bed. Beard face. Yep. You think we have treats for him? He wags his tail so much. Look at him. Every time you pet him. <laughs> beard in the front and a beard in the back. You cutie. Come on this side so that I can open the gate. <laughs> Winston doesn't want to go. Come on. Come on. Stay in here, Zoro. There you go. Cake. All right, Lydia. Have fun with the bucks tonight. Hey, good night. <laughs> Okay, it's time to put them away. They all know Ready. where to go. <laughs> oh. You gotta put it back Willow on everyone. No, Willow, you have to stay in. Come on, Luna, hurry. Come on, Doris. Is that everyone? I think that's everybody. Okay. But hey, Luna, Luna and Penny both went into their first stall. Look at them. Oh, they did? Good job, Good girls. Now we just need the babies in there with them. Come on, baby. Oh, Ethan already put Winnie in there. Here you go. Fern, you gotta go with your little boy. Alright, we've got Tilly and Doris in there. We've got Fern and Willow, the lookalikes. And then there's the two old ladies and two babies. They're getting along better. They are. Well, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. Luna's knocking Penny off to the when side. It, when it comes to food, Luna's a little bit. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching us. If you want to see the video where Luna has been a really good mom, go ahead and click here. So is your family obsessed with honey or are you normal? Had to transfer them. We had to transfer the oh, honey. Oh, I see. He only gave it in these gallon little containers, but we <sighs> want our bucket of honey. We want the bucket. So, me and Dad are just slowly We're dying. Scooping. Slowly dying. Okay. Sounds great. <laughs>